We're going to have a look at how we put buildings into landscapes now. And this is a, a building that um, is badly drawn, but it's a way that uh, a lot of us start off by drawing buildings. And we get a ruler out because it's a, a straight building, it's got edges on it and quite different to the countryside. So we tend to use a ruler on the building and it looks very static and childlike if we do that. So I want to show you a better way of drawing your buildings in the first place before we paint them. Now normally we hold a pencil like this, but I'm going to hold it this way, which is much looser. I have less control over the pencil. And so the marks that I make are going to be more organic and looser. And I'm not going to worry about using a ruler. I'm just going to be drawing freehand so that we don't get straight lines. We get lots of curved lines and, and more organic shapes to the building, which helps it to fit into the organicness of the countryside around. It doesn't make it stand out as something that shouldn't be there, but it makes it look as if the building really fits with the rest of our drawing, with the rest of our painting, with the similar style that we paint the rest of the, the picture with. A little bit of ground there that softens the, the building into the ground. We're going to put some, some grasses and bits and pieces there to, uh, to sort of sit the building in. Now I'm adding on a little bit here because it may not have been in the original picture, but it just creates more interesting shapes. There's a bush on the right hand side and a little bit on the left there. It just creates more of an interesting shape to the building. And we're all about creating variety and interest for the viewer to look at. So if you compare the two, you can see that. Now I've painted the first one in a way again that um, the beginning painters might, might do, just using flat colours on the various areas, so on the roof and the window and the door. Just painted flat colours in, pretty much the same on the ground and in the, the sky area as well. And I've not marked out one side of the building from another, apart from having a pencil line. Now we don't want those pencil lines, they don't exist in reality and we've got to get rid of them. We will show you how to do edges in a moment to make the building look 3D. So let's have a go at painting the other little picture and I'll show you how to, to paint a little sketch like this, which will bring life to the building. So I'm not just using one colour for any area here. I've got two colours. I've got a, um, a burnt sienna sort of colour and a raw umber coming in the middle. Just to create variety, even in little areas, you want as much variety as you can get. So the roof now will come up as a two-toned coloured roof um, rather than just one flat boring colour. Let's put in with a little bit of shadow colour now some of the shadows on the building. So I'm imagining that the sun's coming in from the top left. So let's put everything that's not, that's going to be in shadow in in shadow. And I've got a, a, a purpley mixture with ultramarine blue and cadmium red. But again, we're going to vary this colour. We're going to not just put it on as a flat colour, we're going to vary it. So put some of it in there on the side of the house, but now I want to add in, I'm going to put in a little bit of the roof colour actually, a little bit of burnt umber and, and, and raw sienna just into it, just to warm that shadow area up. And let's break it in there where the bush is next to the house. Put a little bit of it here as, again in the, the window just to give us a, a bit of a feel for, uh, for the shapes that are there in the window. And then with a, a dark green, and again, I'm going to vary the greens quite a lot, bringing in some warmer browns as well. I just want to feed in the, the uh, vegetation and the, the, the countryside just in front of the house there. Just plonk that in nice and roughly. It needs a path leading up to the house, so let's just drag that out with a, a damp brush. It stops the paper being completely white. It gives a little bit of color, but is lighter than the, the, the grassland around it or the herbs around it. We're going to feed some of these as well into the into the building. We don't want a hard edge at the bottom of the building. It needs to be nice and soft so it grows out of the countryside or it sits in the countryside, whichever way you want to look at it. So I'll put a little bit of that just into the building as well, just to tie it in. Now with our shadow colour again, I'm going to come in and just put some shadows under the eaves. This will make the, the house look very 3D. 
just doing that one thing. And the end wall here has dried now, so I'm just going to go over it again with another layer of this shadow colour just to darken it down, which really increases the sunshine on it. And there we go. Painting the door. And again, I'm not just going to paint a square or a rectangle here. I'm going to leave it a little bit loose at the bottom, let the viewer invent the rest of it. So I'm just going to leave it that shape. I know that's not the door shape, but it's much more artistic, it's much more creative to leave it like that. Let's fill in some more of this window. Put in a little bit more colour on there. We'll again leave some little white bits in there just for glints of, of uh, the panes of glass in the light. But just to mark in the window. And we'll come back and finish that off later when that's dry. And there's a little window here as well, so I'll just put that one in there. Again, nothing needs to be completely straight. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly right. The more character you get into it, the better the picture is, actually, in my view. So here's this bush going in, just dobbing in some, some dark paint there. It's in the shadow of the house, so it's quite dark. And we'll paint in some sky around it as well. Again, on the other picture, it was just one color sky. We're going to vary it on this one. Variation's the key all the time. So we're going to put a little bit of warm color, a little bit of yellow ochre in there just to warm up patches of the sky, just to gray it down a bit as well uh, if the blue is too intense. But just to create variety. That's what painting is all about. It's about pleasing the eye. It's about the person who looks at it having lots to look at and uh, lots of interesting things going on. You can see there how the chimneys show, shows up really nicely there against the sky. And we'll just blend that tree in at the right hand side there just so it fades away. I'm putting in another little bush on this side as well just to delineate between the very pale sky at the bottom and the edge of the little outhouse there. It just helps to, um, to put an edge to the house on that side. And while I've got this green, we'll put some more detail into the into the front. Just scrub, scrub some colours in. Now I've just made this picture up, and I suggest you, you do that. I suggest you do a number of these little sketches and just have a play, really, with it. So when you come then to work from life, you've got the skills that you need to bring into the picture. And remember not to be, not to be totally controlled by what you see in front of you. You've got to make a good picture that hangs on a wall and people look at and... and and enjoy the picture, even if it's not exactly the same as the reality that you painted from outside. The important thing is the picture. So a little bit more darks in the window there, just to bring that to life. And we're almost there now. What I think it just does need, though, is something to break up that skyline. It's only broken up by the roof and the chimney. So it needs something a little bit more organic. So I'm going to pop a tree in there. It's a little bit sort of greyish. It's away in the distance somewhere. So I'll just put that in just to just to make a more interesting skyline between the building and and the sky behind. Again, it's all to do with this interest, all to do with bringing in um, change and variety. You've got to create your picture. And that's just what I'm doing here, just seeing what it needs and just putting in the little bits and pieces that it needs. And there we are, pretty much there, I think. Let's just do a little bit more, just pull it out, a bit more shape on that side. But I think we're there. Um, I could spend ages now fiddling, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep it fresh. And when you look at the two paintings together, you can see the difference. You can see how much we've progressed from the one on the left to the one on the right. So have a go at it and see what little houses you can paint in the countryside.